What did you think last week when you heard the news that Lori had been arrested? You know, initially I was shocked in a good way. You know, there was definitely elation uh, and a huge sigh of relief. And then, you know, quickly followed by like, okay, this isn't the finish line. The court documents came out Friday saying that Tylee was last seen at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, what, what were your thoughts when you had heard that? Part of me was really encouraged when I saw that because one of the really pressing questions that I've asked throughout this entire thing is when was Tiny last seen? Like we've, we've had a time and a date stamp on when JJ was last seen from the beginning, you know, from the time that this story broke. <clears throat> but no one has been able to say when Tylee was last seen and so like I've asked that question over and over and and that's really been a pain point just this sense of like she just slipped away unnoticed you know so so I was glad to have some kind of uh, date camp and, but then it was at the same time clearly just disconcerting just the thought of her being out at this national at this just the thought of her being out at this national park with this cast of characters you know and just wondering what they had on their minds you know it's already been a worry that rexburg is surrounded by miles upon miles of you know forest and you know lots of places to you know, potentially, <clears throat> you know, hide someone and What's kind of your hope from here for the legal system? Uh, I feel reasonably confident that law enforcement is working overtime to stack on more charges. There's little question in my mind that more charges will be coming. So I know that there's a lot of pressure on them to pull together a lot of the details of this case. I know with Melanie Boudreau or I guess Blosky now coming forward and admitting um, to her role in the shooting of her ex-husband, you know, I, that's one more player that hopefully they'll be able to, you know, sh shake some fruit off of that tree. But yeah, I, I do feel confident that more will be coming. What was your relationship like with Lori before all of this came out? You know, up until 2018, we had a very amicable relationship. I definitely wanted to be a part of Tylee's life. And and from the time I met Lori in 2002, and she was she was delightful. She was, a, she always came across as a loving, caring parent, downright doting. You know, her, her kids were, <coughs> excuse me, her kids were very well cared for. Um, and so there really were very few red flags. Of course, until 2018, when I went out there after my brother died. And that, that was when, you know, there were just some things that she had said that were alarming that kind of went beyond the pale of, you know, religious um, ideation she's talked about before. Like what? Do you remember what she said? Yeah, so um, she was much more fixated on the end times. I definitely don't remember her ever talking about the end times before that visit, because I think that would have been something that would have stood out to me. You know, so, some of what she talked about over the years with her faith, I, I just don't have really a grid for it, you know? So that didn't really bother me that much that, you know, okay, I don't really understand, you know, some of what she believes, but the end time stuff was disconcerting. And she brought it up three different times 
with what seemed like in, an increasing sense of urgency. Like there was something I was supposed to do with this information, but I didn't know what I was supposed to do, you know, because I, you, she definitely seemed very scared of the end times. And in the last reference, she was specifically talking more about how scary the end times would be. And that was when she crossed the line and said, I just think sometimes it would be better just to put my kids in a car and go over the side of a cliff. And, you know, that that was definitely very, very shocking. She but at that point, there were already, you know, so many stressors in our relationship that that just wasn't something that we could like come back from because you know? mm -hmm. that's not something you know, a parent, any parent I know would ever kid about. And for those people who haven't been following this story, describe your relationship uh, with, with Lori as far as marrying into the family and whatnot. So Lori married my brother, Joe Ryan, in 2002, and they flew me out to, to meet Lori, and she was pregnant with Ty Lee at the time, and they were madly in love. Like, I had never seen my brother so happy, and, you know, he was like Inspector Gadget, was already stockpiling, you know, everything you can imagine a parent would need and things that a parent wouldn't need, you know, and so they were both very excited. It was a really good visit, and then we had a a joint family vacation um, almost a couple years later and uh, then after joe and lori divorced i actually maintained contact with lori not a lot and uh, it was all to her credit she would reach out and and so i actually my family and her family also shared a vacation in florida together and this is when she was married to charles yeah, you know, so that's how I also got to know Charles. But, so, so, yeah, so our, our families definitely had a connection, and, you know, we wanted to be able to stay connected to Tiny. How old was your brother when he died, Annie? Uh, Joe was 59 when he died. He died of a heart attack, from what we understand. Have you gone back to think that maybe that wasn't the case? Absolutely. I mean, I really just go back and forth on that one because on the one hand, it is feasible that he could have died of a heart attack because heart disease does run in our family. So I want to be fair that that is a possibility. At the same time, I had questions about the autopsy. So reading through the autopsy, I was kind of surprised by some of the facts that the autopsy got wrong, like they had his height wrong, they had his um, uh, his build wrong, like they, um, he was classified as heavy set, and so, and, and Joe was actually very physically fit, so he definitely wasn't overweight, but then it also was a little off-putting that the term heavy set was used, because that's not a medical term, and in fact it's kind of like an outdated boomer term, you know, like dungarees or pocket pocketbook. So that that also just was really curious to me. So I didn't find out until much later, till all of this happened, that I thought all autopsies were performed by doctors. So I just wonder, you know, when you add in the fact that they couldn't get a hold of any next of kin, Lori didn't return any of the ME's calls, which she mentioned to me later, that I just wonder if it was like, well, nobody really cares about this guy. I mean, not that they would have done that on purpose, but I do question at this point if it was just kind of a more preliminary autopsy. So but at this point, it's kind of moved because it's and they were divorced when he died? Yes. So they that were divorced, and it was a very contentious divorce. It was. Did she, Do you know, did she get any of his life insurance money? Boy, that is a big question. 
question. Uh, there's no question in my mind, Joe absolutely would have had a life insurance policy, and there's also no question she would not have been the beneficiary. So one of my concerns, given the, the timing of the disappearance of the kids, and again, this is just, you know, as I'm trying to make sense of it all, I do wonder if maybe he had it in a trust for Tylee that matured when she turned 17 because JJ was last seen the day before Tylee's 17th birthday. I have no idea, uh, but, um, but yeah, so I, but I don't actually know if he got a life insurance policy. I don't know that for sure. So yeah. I'm hoping that law enforcement is chasing that down because everything seems to be, you know, motivated by money how are you doing how's your family doing through all of this i mean this this gets wilder by the day it seems like and i don't know if there's going to be any sort of conclusion immediately yeah um you know i mm. yeah. it's just been the most mind-numbing thing to to watch you know like i just keep trying to research and drill into all the details trying to make sense of this you know like i started pulling together a timeline just because i in the beginning stages i couldn't even keep track of who are all these people who is chad daybell who where did all these people come from you know how could i have been in relationship with Lorian and have not had any idea that all of this was going on. It's just the most bizarre thing I've ever seen play out, you know, and I live in New York City, it's it's weird to like walk by a newsstand and, you know, see my family. You know, yeah, it's, and yet, you know, whatever, I'm suffering it pales in comparison to what these kids suffered, you know, so, yeah. Mm. I can't imagine, Annie. I, I can't. Uh, but I've got to tell you, it's been so nice to have you as Tylee's advocate. Mm -hmm. it, it seems, I don't know if anyone else in your family has spoken out publicly, but it seems you're kind of leading the charge for her. And can